I was thinking how maybe about nine or ten years ago, I was visiting uh, Zimbabwe. My friends. <laughs> and we were in, uh, in Harare. We had a temple at that time. Uh, only for a very short time. And we were thinking that around those years of trying to establish some type of temple uh, here in Botswana. And so somehow most of us never came to visit. And so I was very happy yesterday when I found that I had a chance to visit Botswana. <laughs> Every environment where there's a temple is very special. When you analyze it, the temple is like an embassy. Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, Bumira Ponalo Bhav, Kam Madura Kendra Cha, Ahankara Ikyami Vina Pukitya Sha. Krishna is talking to Arjuna, and he says, There is the material world, my separated energies, earth, water, fire, everything, subtle energies, mind, and heaven. And he says, but all of those energies, they comprise a separated presence. Because God has three main aspects. God has what's called Bahiranga Shakti, that which brings in material energies. The Tashta, the marginal potency of the Lord, like the Atma, the source, <coughs> the part of the marginal potency of God. The Atma, everyone's soul is the same. The same soul in the channel, same soul in a man and a woman, African, European, American, all the same soul. Body is different. But the soul is the same because the soul is Mami Vamsa Jumaloke, Divaku Tatsanaki, Manashatani, Indiani, Papakistani, Kasi. The soul is part and parcel, Kaji and Kran. It's the very same in quality, but different in quantity. So the temple, the Mandir, it's something very special. Just like the mini buildings, uh, made out of different types of substances. But the difference when there is a temple is that that serves as like an embassy for the spiritual world. It's like here, and the chief saying here, major C. So there are embassies of other countries. Even though they are in Botswana, they are not fully of Botswana because there are certain laws, diplomatic immunity, certain things that are special because there is an embassy representing a foreign power. When you walk into the embassy, sometimes people are dressed according to the country it represents, speaking that language. And the embassy allows you a chance to get certified. Visa, work permit, something. The embassy has an ambassador in the staff. So the temple is actually like an embassy for the spiritual world. And so it's to allow us in getting our certification and to be properly uh, fixed and being able to travel to our eternal existence. And so we see the temple environment encourages us how to put God as in sin, how to do everything with a God in his orientation. The temple environment reminds us that even though we have to do so many day-to-day -day things, which is normal, but that there is always something higher. 
There are many relative and transitory things in the form of light, but there is something bright. The soul is always hungry, looking for something higher, knowing that there is something that it can connect with that it will not be disappointed. You know, now people change professions, they change countries, they change so many things. And they find every place has different types of problems. Some places just kind of fall into the world. There are always some things that are wonderful about a place and some things that are not so wonderful. But that is that is all a part of the duality of the material world. The material world is full of duality. So, is that what I'm saying? But your world is, is full of duality. And those dualities bring what's called chapel sukha. Flickering happiness, flickering pleasure, but it comes and it also goes. But the temple is to remind us that we don't really have to always remain in an environment where there is war, disease, old age and death. This is only part of the atmosphere of the material universes. It's like now, modern science is gradually catching up. Last year, they were able to find other planets within this universe. And now there's a science called exobiology. It recognizes that there are life, life molecules in many, many other universes. But rishis and yogis have known this since time and rule. They have known that there is so much more than what we see, touch, taste, and smell. But normally people live only for improving their eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. And that's all. But obviously there's something else to human life than that. Because the animal is also eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So if God simply wanted us to live as the animal, he would have, he would have given us a different type of form. But in the human form, we have rational intelligence. And with that intelligence, we have the ability to pursue self realization And if we don't, it is not fully used in the human form what it is geared for. It's like the, the animal can come into this room or come into a philosophical uh, where philosophy is being discussed. But it will have no interest. Because by its nature, it functions basically by instinct, by drives, and that's it. But the human comes into an environment, and he or she may not agree, but they can hear and think about and reflect and meditate on the subject. Therefore, we have been given a form that allows us to ponder and to search out and try to find out what is really the purpose of life. It's like just to live for a while, and then to remain for some time, and then to die in that Is life so uncreative, and God is so limited, He can only allow us to live for some small years, we struggle, and then we die in that city. So obviously there's more to existence than that. And based on our common, we enter into different environments, different situations, different things come upon us based on the common patterns. And so the temple gives us certain technologies how to alter certain karmic situations. It's like, for instance, someone who has, from a previous life, has some negative karma that is following the person. In this lifetime, they often have chronic disease, so many legal problems, lack of chance of education. These are some signs from the previous life of some inauspicious karma that has followed the person. Or some Positive auspicious karma. Someone is born in an environment in the family where they're exposed to spiritual life. They're encouraged. It's like our small kids. They're very fortunate. Because they are born in a situation <coughs> where their parents are eager to have spiritualism as a part of the environment. So that means that soul has had, had a desire to make a certain amount of progress in his life. And so the neighbors have arranged for that soul to take birth in an environment where the mother and father are interested in pursuing spiritual spiritual consciousness. 
And so they have a chance to grow and to, from day one, be exposed to such. So, so many things are happening, but then Krishna arranges that we have like the embassies to adjust any of the incoherences. So in the temple environment, we hear and remember the Shorty Tabla, Kitty Tabla, Smarty Tabla, this time. We hear and remember and we reflect on various leaders or pastimes of God. We have a chance to engage in the Bhajan and the Kirtan to take him for some. We have a chance to engage in worshiping the philosophy, uh, appreciating many of the different expansions and avatars and forms of God. So this helps us to get recertified, and what it does is that it helps us in revitalizing our dormant consciousness. The spiritual life is nothing really new, it's not a position. It is a revitalization of what we have already been a part that has been put somewhere on. So self-realization is really now beginning to reawaken. It's like someone has had amnesia, and then certain things begin to they associate with, begins to remind us of who they were. And now they begin to become alert. So the temple environment serves in that way as an embassy, even though it's in the material world, it is not really a material world. The kind of vibrations and consciousness that's a part of my view. It's something to give nourishment to the soul. About the nourishment to the soul, while we feel a tremendous imbalance, we can be very prestigious, we can have great fame, great wealth, so many other things. So that will be feeding and catering mainly to the physical part of ourselves. So we want to be very honest. That part of itself has to be dealt because certain basic things do. But at the same time, it is important that we are giving nourishment to the most essential part of our existence, and that is to the soul. So we come and we associate in different temples as a way to make that connection. We certify, we find certain things that are important. Like in our Hare Krishna movement, we always stress that one should not eat any flesh, one should not engage in taking any form of intoxication. No gambling, no illicit affairs, sexual activities. And this way, one's mind and consciousness becomes purified for the higher self that becomes dominant, for the lower self and the patches to gradually become calm. Everyone is having a duality of higher and lower self. And so, as we are stimulating the higher self, then we're preparing ourselves for going back to the Krishna, Krishna, Krishna.